Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a CAD Soft Eagle schematic from a library of uh, parts that has already been, I guess, assembled uh, for you. So you can just pick the parts uh, from that one library and not have to go hunt for them. Uh, this uh, schematic that is going to be drawn is in the context of a um, freshman course that I teach where uh, this year students are making a Skittle sorting machine and they're also getting exposed to uh, a little bit of CAD Soft Eagle so this is about the simplest board that you can make so there is a circuit board that involves a, uh, a switch and an RGB LED and that's all we're gonna make so that's what I'm gonna walk through here I'll probably split this into a couple videos first one will be doing the schematic then we'll do the uh, board layout <clears throat> and then uh, generation of the Gerber files so the objective specifically for this project then is to create a custom printed circuit board that holds an RGB LED switch and I should say a, a common cathode RGB LED and switch for a tactile switch uh, for operating the Skittle sorter. Okay, and the Skittle sorter uses an Arduino Nano so this will ultimately go back uh, there. So here are some design requirements. We want to use a common cathode 5 millimeter RGB LED like the one that's in the Ar Elegoo uh, Super Starter Kit that we got off Amazon. <clears throat> we want to use a 4 pin tactile momentary switch like the one that's in the Elegoo Kit. Use 0.1 inch spaced header pin connector for interfacing the switch and LED to the Arduino Nano terminal breakout board that will be powering your Skittle sorter. So this just means you're going to have some pads, some holes on your board that are at 0.1 inch spacings and that will accommodate uh, a, um, a pin header that will be soldered in to which we can plug in a connector that will, send, um, that will connect basically your board to your Arduino Nano. So you're going to use a 2 pin connector for the switch and a 4 pin connector for the LED. And then in addition we want to use a redundant connector, it'll be a 1 five pin connector. All right, and the reason we only need five and not two plus four is because both the two and the four have a ground signal. So if we combine it on one connector, we don't need six signals, we just need five. The reason I want some redundancy is it gives us flexibility uh, at this point uh, so that when we actually go build the unit, you could decide either to run a two pin and a four pin header uh, connector and, and um, harness, wire harness, or you could bundle it all as a one five pin header and wire harness. <clears throat> you want to add mounting holes. You'll need number four, <clears throat> excuse me, number four machine screws. So machine screws, the number fours have an outside diameter of about 0.11 inches or so we'll make holes that are a little bit bigger than that and uh, you will need to place those either two or four of them uh, so you can secure your board to your uh, acrylic plexiglass assembly, your skittle sorter and you'll need to ensure that there'll be at least a 3 eighths of an inch diameter clearance around each hole and this is to ensure that if uh, number four machine nut, wash, nut or washer are in contact with the boards that they won't interfere with any uh, traces or circuitry uh, nearby. <clears throat> we want to allow for clearance of about uh, about the, the header pin connectors so when you slide the, the header uh, this is going to be the, the connector that's on the end of your wire harness and you plug it into your board you don't want that header connector or that connector to interfere with anything else on your board so let's not place any components within an eighth of an inch um, from uh, your connector pins. Okay, Unless you plan on adding additional circuits which you can if you wish your board need not be very large I'd say one inch by two inches and it could be smaller if you want to. Uh, you may make your board of any shape, but be careful, the dimension layer must have a fully closed contour for your board. That's why it's critical to enter the exact coordinates rather than simply eyeball it. Okay? Um, you may add a fillet to your board outline if you wish, so as to off, uh, soften the corners, round the corners off, and you can also add internal cutouts or slots if you wish. Uh, the assumption here is we're going to mill this on our in-house LPKF um, PCB milling machine. If you're going to go out for a board, usually you have to pay more for having internal slots or cutouts and or having odd shapes for your board, so you may have to stick to something that's just rectangular. And then uh, lastly, or maybe it's not lastly, let's see, no, not net lastly, we got a couple more. Uh, you will need to add copper fill to the top and bottom of your board, and we're going to tie these electrically to ground, and we'll use a polygon fill to do that, and then we'll name the polygon ground so that it will connect it electrically to our ground net 
and you want to use an isolate value of at least 0.032 inches and I'll explain when we get there what isolate does. And then finally for your final design package you're going to need to include the following. You're going to zip this all together and, and submit it uh, to Moodle as a, as a single uh, file. So you'll have your schematic and your board files. You'll have a, bar, a BOM folder that contains inside of it an HTML file that was uh, of the BOM created by your Eagle schematic. You'll have a PDF folder with schematic PDF and multiple board views uh, in PDF format as we talked about in class at top top uh, bottom top copper bottom copper bottom copper mirrored uh, top component and bottom component and finally the cam folder which uh, should have appropriate Gerber files for fabricating your board and inside there you should include a multi-layered PDF file which is uh, generated and provided to you when you upload your Gerber files to freedfm.com, which I'm going to have you do, and it checks uh, design rules, and then it generates this really nice multiple layer PDF, uh, which is a great uh, archiving tool for you, even if you don't go order uh, your board ultimately from uh, advanced circuits. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, as a resource, you have uh, uh, this library that I'm going to make available for those of you watching this on YouTube. Uh, it should be should be a link down in the description, and uh, all the parts that you need for this should be in this library. A little information on the components: uh, we needed a common cathode RGB five millimeter LED. I did not have this uh, from the libraries that I could gather online. I'm sure someone had one, but I didn't didn't see one, so I created one. And you can see there's a, a separate video that I've created on how to take. Uh, in this case, it was a common anode. Uh, RGB and I created a common cathode RGB part from that. So it's not creating a library part from scratch, but it's modifying one. So if you want to learn how to do that, check out my other video. And then this is the type of tactile switch that we're going to be using. Okay, so that's it for introduction. So let's get into uh, drawing this. Uh, I'm going to be using um, some shortcuts. I have a custom uh, menu here that uh, if you're just if you just have a uh, a stock install of Eagle, you won't have these uh, this custom menu. But uh, along with this, I have some sh custom shortcuts that uh, you can modify in your Eagle.scr file. And so I have. Um, let's see. I don't know if I'll have the the little shortcut or the yeah my key logger here. I don't know if it'll show that. Yeah. So I'll be doing that using shortcuts rather than um, clicking on icons a lot of times. So I'm going to do. I'm going to add. Uh, a part here and uh, what we want is let's go ahead and get a frame uh, I'll just use a letter size frame um, come on let me grab that okay <clears throat> then we will add uh, let's say we're going to have an RGB so I have a, an RG, I'll just put RGB, RGB, and here's our common cathode, here, common cathode, that's the one I want right there. Okay, put that in here, and we need some resistors. I'm going to use uh, surface mount, or leaded resistors here, so we'll use this guy. Oh, this thing's bugging me. This key logger gets in my way. Okay, and sure, we'll just draw it like this. Here. Okay, and then we'll need um, ground. Do I have a ground symbol? Hmm. Maybe I don't have a ground. Okay, well, I'll have to grab. I don't technically need a ground here. I, I need to add a library that has ground. Okay, then we have a tactile switch. I think I can. There we go. This guy in. Okay, and now lastly, I need to add in my connectors. Now, the connectors I'm using are these Molex <clears throat> 0.1 inch headers. I happen to know that they are like an M um, and then a number. So M0, because I'm just going to be using 2 and 4. Uh, put the wild cards in front. And then back, and we can find them easily. So you get a bunch of different choices here. Some are surface mount. I want the leaded one, 
and I'm going to use the one that has the locked lead. So what they do here is they offset the the holes a little bit so that when you go to place the uh, connector in there, the, the pins, there, there's actually a little bit of interference so it kind of holds it in place. And that makes it easy to solder by hand when you flip the board over and you're soldering on the bottom side, the pins don't fall out. So I'll go ahead and come on now. Uh, did I select it? I didn't. Um, right here. There we go. Okay, and then lastly we'll get a M4. Sorry if it's off screen there. Here's a 4 lock. There we go. Okay. So now I'm ready to wire this up. Maybe rearrange a few things. Uh, Okay, there we go. Clean this up a little bit. I can connect these together too if I want to. Okay, so there, that's my schematic. There's not too much to it. If I wanted to uh, arrange some of the text and so forth, I can, uh, I can smash the part right here and then that separates, oh wait I forgot, I've got to give values, let me first add values so um, I can add a value, these are going to be 220 ohms I think yeah. which you see here now they they kind of clobber the reference designators so what I want to do is I want to move the text independently which I can't do initially the part all moves together, right? I could, I could stagger them, that would be okay um, but the other way to do it it probably isn't a bad idea to stagger them a bit. But I'll show you anyway how you can uh, unlink these. What you do is you smash the part. So you, it's uh, this guy right here. Click on, the, and every part that you click on, it then gives you um, an origin point for the text. And now you can move the, the text independently and uh, to wherever you care to place it. Okay. So the other thing is if you don't get the granularity you want, you can hold down the Alt key and use the alternate uh, grid, which is uh, typically a lot finer. If you want to change that grid, you can just click here. And uh, you can see the standard grid is 0.1, and the alternate grid, when you hold the Alt key, is 0.01. And that usually works well for, for schematics. So actually, I don't really need to move these, uh, these guys around here because I staggered the resistor, so I'll just put them back like they were. And that is good enough. Um, Okay, so I'm going to be done with the schematic. I'll just run a, a, a electrical rules check right here. See if we have any problems. It says J1 has no part value and JP1 has no part value, and that's fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Um, it's just telling me that I haven't designated a part. What I do want to do is change the names to call this J1, and I'll call this J2 just to be consistent with that. Okay, and <clears throat> maybe I want to change this. Yeah, I could change the value or get rid of the value here. Um, TL1105L. Just call it something brief, more more brief. Okay, so there's the schematic, and we're ready to then go on to the uh, the layout. So if you haven't created a board yet, when you click the generate switch to board, it's going to create a board for you. And uh, I must have already had one because it didn't ask me if I wanted to create one. So it'll come in like this. You'll have a big board outline which you can then modify and all your parts off to the side. So I will stop here and I will start uh, a separate video that'll just show you or go through the layout on uh, how to do how to uh, create a board from a schematic and then and maybe in another video we'll then generate the Gerber files and uh, check those out in a, in a Gerber viewer uh, and then submit files to the free DFM tool and kind of go through that whole process. Alright, that's all for now.